Hello everyone, so the IOQM is coming up and we have a couple of really interesting problems for you today. And yes, we are back with number theory. So today we are going to be discussing about divisibility and Diophantine equations. And we have two problems like I said, problem number 29 and problem number 30 from the IOQM in 2021. So the last two problems basically, finishing off the test. And in this video we are going to be learning obviously divisibility techniques in number theory, how to kind of like deal with that, uh, not using congruence modulo. Then we have Diophantine equations, then we have book sessions for the IOQM, and at the very end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Let's begin. Let me just label this as question number one and question number two. I believe this was problem number 30 and this was problem number 29. I might be mixing up the order, but yeah, these are the last two problems essentially. So um, if I just try to target the first problem, what are they saying? They are saying that find the number of pairs A, B of natural numbers so that B is a three digit number. A plus 1 divides B minus 1 and B divides A squared plus A plus 2. Now, when you read this problem, obviously there are certain things that you can notice. First is that B is a three digit number. Maybe that's a very important fact because if, if that fact wasn't needed, they probably would not have given such a detail in the question. So that the, the intuition that I'm getting is that the fact that B is a three digit number might limit our cases to some finite value of A comma B, right? So let's see how we can proceed with that. So a plus 1 divides b minus 1. So therefore b minus 1 is k times a plus 1. Let me write this the equation number 1. And um, also we have b divides a square plus a plus 2. So a square plus a plus 2 is let's say um, some, some let's say c times b. And let's just put that as equation number 2. So a square plus a plus 2 is equal to c times i'll take the value of b from the first equation and just plug it in so that will be nothing but a k plus k plus 1 okay and um if i just try to simplify that let's see what we will get i will get um a square plus a plus 2 is equal to a c k plus c k plus c okay so um, I'll get a times a plus 1 plus 2 is equal to if I take ck as common, I'll get a plus 1 plus c. Now all we really need to do is we just need to compare the left hand side and the right hand side. You see this a plus 1 over here, a plus 1 over here, but essentially means that ck is equal to a, right? Standard method of comparison algebra. And of course c is equal to 2, right? Now once we have c is equal to 2, we can write a is equal to 2k. And there is another interesting thing that we've just figured out. So therefore, essentially, A is even, right? A is even. A is equal to 2K is even. Or rather, K is equal to A by 2, right? That is essentially something that we are formulating. So now, now, B minus 1, what we initially written was K times A plus 1, right? From, I believe this was equation number 1. B minus 1 was K times A plus 1. And um, so I can write b minus 1 is a by 2 times a plus 1. Now, now comes in the fact that b is a 3 digit number. So b is a 3 digit number. So this is what I was kind of referring to earlier. There are only going to be some finite values of a for which this thing is a 3 digit number. So what will happen is there's going to be a minimum value of a for which b is a 3 digit number. There's going to be maximum value of a for which b is a 3 digit number. And you'll actually see how we how that how that makes sense so for example if i plug in a is equal to 10 what do we get on the right hand side so here we just try to evaluate the right hand side that'll be 10 by 2 times uh, 11 so that'll be um 55 and so b would be 56 but b is a three digit number so this obviously does not hold true however if i take a is equal to 14 i'll get 14 by 2 times 15 and that is 105 if i uh, and b will be so 106 right the RHS is 105 and the RHS plus 1 is B. If I take A is equal to 13, I'll get the RHS is 13 by 2 times 14, which is 98. So B will be 99. So again, this does not hold true. 
So B, so A is equal to 14 is actually the minimum value of A for which B is a, a three digit number. And in fact, B here comes out to be 106. So we can just write this B minimum as well. Now what will be the maximum value? Using a similar idea, uh, you can actually find out, for example, if I take A is equal to 50, what will the right hand side be? 50 by two times 51, which is 51 times 25. And this is really a four digit number. Why? Because 25 times 50 is how much? 1250 plus 25, this is 1275. So it's a four digit number and it does not work out. And if you actually do the calculations, um, A is A is equal to 44 is actually the maximum value for which B is a three digit number. So 45, 44 by two times 45 is 45 times 22. So that's 45 times 20 plus 90, which is 990. So B essentially comes out to be 991. And this is the maximum value of B for which uh, it is a three digit number. So what we can see essentially is that for A is equal to 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 44, B is a three digit number. Now here is the interesting thing. Now what a lot of people will do, they'll just say that, oh, Pranav, A is 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 44. How many numbers are these? These are around 31 numbers. Why are they 31? Because it's, it's essentially forming an AP, right? A plus N minus one times one. This will be 30 is equal to N minus one. So N is equal to 31 standard way of finding uh, number of terms in AP, right? First term, last term, whatever. So you'll say that this is 31, but this is actually a wrong answer. And why is it the wrong answer? Because here we had this very neat argument that A is even, my friends, A is equal to 2K. This is what we'd formulate. A has to be even because K is an integer. K is not a fraction or anything, right? A is an integer, so A has to be even. So A is 14, 16, 18, all the way up to 44. So that is why never forget these preconditions that you had formulated while solving the problem. So now what will be the number of values? Same using the same concept of an AP. Now the number of values will be n minus one times two, so n is equal to 16. So the answer is actually 16, right? So A is equal to 14, 16, 18, all the way to 44. And corresponding to this, there'll be certain values of B, right? And so what are the number of pairs of A comma B? It will be 16. So yeah, that is how you would solve the first problem. And now coming to the second problem. What are they saying in the second problem? Let's just see. So the positive integers a comma b comma c satisfy this given equation and to find the maximum value of a plus b plus c not exceeding 99. So the maximum value is going to be 99. Okay. That they've given us a b divided by a minus b is equal to c. And they've asking us the maximum value of a plus b plus c, the maximum value of this. There are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, I've seen some really weird methods of solving this. It's number theory, of course, so multiple solutions are expected. However, the method that I'm going to show you, I really like that because it's very simple and very elementary. Anybody can understand it without a lot of depth in number theory. So what I'm going to do, okay, when I see this problem, what is kind of the problematic aspect about this? What is it that I don't like? I don't like the denominator. If it was AB is equal to C, this is something that is very dealable, right? We've seen this many, many times in number theory. These are something with very dealable terms. But this denominator is actually causing a problem. So is there a way that I can eliminate that? This is kind of the intuition that goes behind this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in B as X, any, any value of X really, you know, and then I'm going to plug A is equal to 2X. Why? Because then the denominator will be X and the X will get canceled out. So A times B, which is 2X times X divided by A minus B, which is X is equal to C. So C is also 2X. So if you actually see a plus b plus c then becomes 5x. So if this is true, if these two conditions are true, then this is true and then this is true, right? So the maximum value of a plus b plus c can be 95 where x is equal to 19. And in this case, a would be 38, b would be uh, 19 and c would be 38. And this actually satisfies a divided by a minus b is equal to c. These numbers do satisfy it. But the problem is like, obviously you cannot mark this as the answer because this is when these two conditions hold true. They may not necessarily hold true always, right? So for this condition, we got 95. Maybe we can get 96, maybe we can get 97, maybe we can get 99 also, like you never know. So now here's the thing, how do we form 99? How is 99 to be formed? The answer lies in the prime factorization of 99. So if I can get a plus b plus c as 11x, I'll just plug in x equals to 9 and I'll get 99. Another way to formulate that would be a plus b plus c is 9x. I can plug in x equals to 11 and formulate it. 
There are a couple of methods. Now let's see if I am able to form 11x or 9x. A, B divided by A minus B equals C. And the good thing is you really don't have to think a lot about this. Last time we had taken um, A as 2x and B as x. Here we just notch it up 1x. So this becomes 3x and this becomes 2x. And just plug that in. Remainder is x is equal to C. So C then becomes 6x. So it's essentially A is 3x, B is 2x, C is 6x. So A plus B plus C becomes 11x. I just plug in x equals to 9. So A plus B plus C maximum value is 99, which is our correct answer. And this happens at A is equal to 27, B is equal to 18, C is equal to 9 times 654. At these three values, A plus B plus C is equal to 99. And yes, so that completes the solution to both of our problems. So these are the last two problems on the IQM 2021. This is a relatively easy paper. And so yeah, you really saw that you did not need a lot of advanced number theory for you to be able to crack this. And if you just give it a little bit of time, it was definitely solvable. So I really hope you like this approach. It's uh, we've seen this approach quite a few times now, actually in Olympians. So it would be good if you knew it for the coming exam. Okay, so yes, some book suggestions for the IQM, Charles and of Pre-College Mathematics, Mathematical Circles, Excursion Mathematics, Test of Mathematics at the 10 plus 2 level, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Elementary Theory of Numbers by Sierpinski, Principles and Techniques in Combinatrix, and Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Gell. So yes, of course, at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem, and we need to find the positive integers x, y, such that 2x divides y squared plus 1, and 2y divides x squared plus 1, given that x is greater than y. So a little bit of a symmetrical looking expression. So I'd really like you to try it out. And if you make any progress on it or if you get a solution, let me know in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.